Hi, I'm Gary, and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'll show you how I make this PSI secret compartment pill box, tube actually, that hangs on your key ring. With this, you can carry any pills that may be important to you or other kinds of items that may fit into this. For me, I'm going to carry my nitroglycerin pills. Since I have heart disease, albeit not too serious, at least in my mind, I'm supposed to carry nitroglycerin pills with me in case I have an event. They really are life-saving. Since I've never had a heart attack, or they've been very mild, I haven't been very good about carrying these nitro pills with me, but I do need to start taking it more seriously. So far, I've had a bypass surgery in 2005 and since 2010, but in four times and I've got six stents now, but never a serious heart attack. I've been lucky to recognize the warning signs and get to the ER with plenty of time to spare. I probably should have quit uh, having those Big Macs for lunch too. In this video, this is my first run to make this item. It looked really simple, so I thought I could make a tutorial of it at the same time. Well, I made a couple of mistakes. I considered not making this video, then I thought it's probably good to show the mistakes I made uh, to help you avoid them. So here it goes, making the 24 karat gold secret compartment pill box or tube. And this is PSI kit number PKSEPILL, -L, and it's $4.95 and scrap blanks that you have around to make the body. This 24 karat gold secret compartment pill box. This is a kit PSI number PKSEPILL. -L. It comes in this bag kit. This Ziploc bags with the instructions in it. It's just a uh, single sheet of paper of instructions back side is blank so it's just a single sheet and all the parts are in here are in individual little ziploc bags okay so the first piece is a stainless steel tube and this is uh, for personal hygiene so to keep things clean and no rust in your tubes or anything like brass or steel can have. Next is an end cap that goes on the end of the assembly and this stays in a permanent position on the body. Then on the other end we'll insert a coupling for the ring cap to screw into. The ring cap is the part that's going to screw in and out to allow you access to your pills. If you can see there are threads in there for the screw cap to screw into. This is the end cap part. You can see it has threads. Also has a recessed area in here to allow for an O-ring. And in this kit comes an O-ring to stick into there. Actually, I'll show slide it over the threads and it'll seal into this cap. Something you might do on that is to dab a little bit of vegetable oil or something on that with a toothpick or something, just a very slight amount just to keep it lubricated so it doesn't dry rot. Then, you know, this end cap here has a hole in it and that's for this key ring that goes in there. And this is a split style key ring or you can slip this onto an existing key ring that you have. Okay, so also with this, you're gonna need a 9 16th drill bit. Uh, for woods, you'll use a brad point drill bit. If you're gonna use acrylics, you're gonna to wanna to use an acrylic drill bit. And I checked out the price on the PSI website for an acrylic drill bit, and that's coming in at like $32. So, well, I'm gonna make a lot of these. You may not wanna uh, use acrylics because of the cost of the drill bit. Um, so you have to kind of check what your market is and see what you want to make. Also requires a bushing set. A pair of these bushings. So you got up here in the picture. And these will be a part of the lathe mounting which I'll show you later. The bushing numbers on this are the P-K-S-E-P-I-L-L-B-U. -L -L I'll put that in the description below. 
This does require a pen blank. Uh, most pen blanks, they, they come in like a five inch length or so. Uh, this one requires a pretty short length. So what I've done is I've saved up a lot of scraps and cutoffs from previous projects and I can use these for uh, things like this or making discs for bottle stoppers or you know other small keychain items like that. Out of this one here, I selected this piece of Coco Bolo, which uh, makes for a good fit for the length that I need and everything here. So that'll work good for me. Next step is I need to mark the center on this piece, which I've already done here. And I've covered in some of my other videos on how to mark center on these for your drilling. So next step is uh, I'll start drilling this blank. Okay, I set this piece up here that I'm going to drill into this rockler jig that I have for holding pieces vertically so I can drill through them. Now this uh, kit requires drilling a hole through here that's 9 sixteenths of an inch, which is 16th of an inch over a half inch, which is a pretty big hole. I didn't have a 9 16 bit in my uh, drill bit kit. So I went to Home Depot and picked up a 9 16 bit, but this is like one of those 120 degree steel bits. So what I'm going to do is to start out with is to kind of like draw a pilot hole through this with a quarter inch bit. Then I'll go back through with the 9 16th bit. I'll switch out to the 9 16th bit. See how that works. Well, that destroyed it. So I guess that don't work so well. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this piece with the 9 16 bit without doing any pilot holes. Slow and easy. Drilling with a high speed steel bit, you really got to go slow and easy because it's not a bit that's really designed for drilling wood made for dry, drilling steel. Check the temperature of my bit here. It's getting a bit hot. So I need to give it a little bit of a rest. Now when drilling wood or acrylics, you always have to watch the temperature that your bit's not getting too hot. Uh, when it gets to being a bit hot that you can barely or you can't touch it, you need to stop and let it cool down. Uh, be careful and touching these to test the temperature because it takes a split second or so for your fingers to register how hot it is so you don't want to burn your fingers. That's getting pretty hot. This uh, works pretty good for both wood and acrylics, you know, to keep te checking on how hot the bit is getting because that's making your workpiece hot also. And if it gets too hot, it can cause it to crack, uh, malform, and other things that will not be good for your end results in your product. I have found that a good time for cooling down the bit is about three minutes. So I just set my little timer either on my smartphone or the kitchen timer that I use to three minutes and by the time I come back that's pretty cool. And I think we're all the way through. Yes we are. All the way through there now. A little bit thin on some of the walls there, but hopefully this will turn out pretty well anyway. Now since I 
blew out that other piece. I'm working with a piece of uh, stabilized maple burl here. And stabilizing these woods, what they do is they kind of soak it in some CA glue. And then that re leaves some rough spots on there, as you can see, I hope. So what I want to do is to smooth that off. And what I would do is put a piece of sandpaper. This is like a 220 grit and put it on a good flat surface and then sand it off to get a smooth edge. That way, when I put it on my sander, since I, this is such a large hole here, you can't use a barrel trimmer on this because there's no um, adapter that fits into this at this large. So I have to put it on my sander in order to square up the ends here for the tubes. To do that, I want to make sure I've got good flat sides that I can use as a reference when I sand it. Here I will use this um, rigid oscillating sander that I'm going to use for squaring up the ends with the tubes. I sand these to get the brass to be shiny evenly all the way around. That way I know it's the end is uh, squared up with the tube. This is the other end and you may notice some gap there between the workpiece and the tube which makes me think that uh, 9 16 bit may not be the really right size. It's a little bit of a loose fit. But hopefully when all the end caps uh, press into place, that'll make up for that difference and it won't show. Okay, I've got this mounted on the lathe here with the bushings. Get this out of the way here, you can see it maybe. Put stuff, these bushings, then the workpiece goes on bushing fits inside that stainless steel tube. Then the other end bushing. Then what we do is turn these down to be even, or at least at the ends with the bushings to get that shape. Then as far as any style or shapes, uh, kind of up to what you want. I'm gonna do this fairly plain for myself here. Put on my face mask. Okay, it is appears to me that the glue is not holding on that tube. Yep, here it is. So, I'm going to have to look at a different way of gluing up this tube. Uh, maybe I'll use some epoxy. Okay, so I re-glued the uh, tube in this piece and I used the epoxy glue this time uh, to help fill up the gaps better and stuff. When you use the epoxy sometimes you get a little bit inside the cylinder here and so I used my bushings to test to make sure if they were clean enough or not and one end was a little bit uh, coated on there so I used a round file to clean it up a bit just enough so I can fit the bushing in that fits in, then the rest of the parts should press in just fine. I'll mount it up on the lathe here, on the bushings. Tail stock up, got in position, tighten the tail a little bit. Don't have to snug that too tightly. Start turning this to shape.
Okay, I've got that down to a fairly good round, uh, a little bit of an edge here. I will switch over my chisel blade to the more of the rounded edge so I can have better control of shaping this. Okay, that's looking pretty good and that's in a good enough shape for what I want. I'll start sanding it. With the sanding I work from a 150 grit down to a 600. And I slow this down to about a 2000 RPM. Looking good. I was stopping and checking to make sure I'm not getting any incorrect lines on there that I don't want. Down to the last grit. That's looking good. Now I'll go over it with some uh, four knot, four zeros, uh, steel wool, which is a really fine. Run the cloth against there to clean off uh, any dust and anything. Now I will use the Aussie oil for polishing this up. I find these old t-shirts really work great for that. I just cut off a swath. What I'll do here is to put two or three drops onto this rag and then I rub it on here and keep rubbing it uh, firmly for about one minute. Running it for one minute uh, gets it to heat up enough because that Aussie oil needs to heat up in order for it to uh, really cure and get a hard finish on it. Gotta shake the stuff up a lot to uh, make sure it's well mixed when you're using it. I use a timer here to let me know when my minute is up. Just keep rubbing it back and forth slowly here to get the heat to build up and get this to seal. You can feel the heat through your finger. It doesn't get burning hot, but it gets warm. Hey, time is up. I'll give it a few more seconds here. Now you see, that's really making for Beautiful finish on there. I'll repeat this two more times and that'll be the finish. This is the pen press, which I will use for assembling this unit. All these parts go in. This is a new pen press from Penn State Industries that serves as a pen press to assemble parts, also as a tool for disassembling pens. Uh, perhaps sometime in the future I'll do a video on how this works. This is kind of brand new out and I haven't seen any other videos on this yet apart from the one from Penn State Industries. Uh, this adjusts here easily back and forth so you can uh, get the correct distances for assembly. Comparative to the old one, this pen press I had before was just for pen pressing and you can see 
you use these uh, various spacer blocks to adjust you know the length for your assembly whereas the other one it's kind of infinitely adjustable plus it'll do pen disassembly for you okay I've zoomed this in so it uh, make it easier for you to see hopefully first thing I'm going to do on this is on his body kind of pick out what looks like a good end that you want to use and first part that goes on it says end cap insert that it's got a little bit of an indentation to give it a start with this particular press what I've been doing I think I'll use the softer edge for this is bringing this up close to a fit because uh, that was a tough push in there it may be some residue from the glue yet that made it so difficult to go in then on the other end here I'm going to put in this piece it's got an indentation to in indicate which end goes in here kind of fits in there uh, let's see so there's indentation so that's the piece that goes in here okay so that went in good sometimes if you press and get too much pressure on there you can wind up getting some cracks in your material Okay, the next part is uh, just this, the cap here that goes on. And it'll just kind of screw on. So with that, I'm going to put this O-ring on to this cap. And yeah, it's a bit small, so you really got to stretch it out here to get it to fit. But eventually I get it on there and work it down into that groove that it fits at the bottom of the cap. That screws on. And as I mentioned before, we would probably take a toothpick, a little bit of like vegetable oil or something like that, just lightly coat around that O-ring to make it uh, prolong the life of the O-ring itself so that over time it doesn't dry rot. Also, on the inside of this, you know, because of the work and the dust and stuff like that, I'd take a Q-tip clean this out uh, so it's good and clean for the pills you're going to put into it. Now, the reason I got this was to uh, make this pill case on my keychain to put my nitroglycerin pills into this. Uh, that's for my heart. And I've never used them in a lot of years, but I'm supposed to carry them with me. And then I put the key ring on here. And then you have your secret compartment pillbox on your key ring. So I always have my pills with me then when I leave home. <clears throat> so that basically completes the making and assembly of this. And it's very nice. Uh, this makes it easy to open and seal. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you got something out of it or you found the inspiration to make something of your own, please give me a like and share. Also, please subscribe to see what I may come up with next. Thanks.